the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, O oh God. I mean, I wish you all a blessed Holy Week as we are approaching the end of this Holy Week, uh, as we now approaching the Holy Thursday and Good Friday, and then the celebration of the uh, Feast of the Glorious Resurrection of our Lord. We thank God for granting us this year to pray in our churches and restore as we can the service in the church during a very special week of the year. As you know, that is during the Holy Week, the church takes us through the events. And today, Wednesday, is the contrast between Judas Iscariot and the woman the woman who poured fragment oil on the head of the Lord, which happened two days before the Passover in Bethany. And uh, that's also the church remind us of another event of another woman who was Mary, the sister of Lazarus, who poured the fragrant oil in the feet of the Lord on six days before the Passover. And uh, the church mentioned the two events during the reading of this day. The first one, the woman which we don't know her name, is because it's happened on Wednesday, two days before the Passover. The other one, Mary, because Judas were there and he criticized uh, Mary for uh, what she did and say, he said that why was this fragrant oil uh, not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor. Of course, the motivation of him was not caring for the poor, as it is mentioned also in the Gospel of St. John, that he said, this he said, not he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. The, he criticized Mary, she gave out of her love to the Lord as expression of her and her sister gratitude to the Lord who raised Lazarus, their brothers. But Judas, he spoke out of his selfishness. He cared for himself and he wanted the money to be in the box so he can be easily to steal this uh, money. And Mary, she sacrificed this uh, costly fragment oil, uh, and but Judas stole from the money of the box. So the church offered for us these two examples, the Mary or the woman as example of sacrifice, of love, or giving, and on the contrast, Judas as example of the uh, hypocrisy and betrayal. Hypocrisy, because he pretended something, but his motivation was different. And, and the Lord spoke about the dangers of hypocrisy, because hypocrisy is very dangerous things. Because hypocrites, they don't repent, because why to repent? They pretend they are righteous people, even if they are doing wrong. And the Pharisees, there is an example of, of that. That's why in all the cases, when we find people who pretend to be righteous, while they are not, they don't repent. And just I remind you of two examples. And the, during the, the Great Lent, we have the story of the prodigal son. And we usually told it the prodigal son, but actually it is the story of the two sons. The first one, is clear, that is, he repented very clearly. But the older one, who pretended to be righteous and following everything in comparison with his brother, which of course his brother did wrong, and he, he even criticized his brother. The difference between the two, when we read the story, as the Lord uh, told it, it's a very clear indication of the repentance of the prodigal son, the younger son. He repented, he returned, and how he was received. But we don't know exactly what happened to the older one. We know that the father went out for him, talked to him, 
and told him why he received his brother in this way. But the story ended without telling us what was the response of the, of the, of the son, the older son, whether he accepted what his father told him or not. We don't know. And of course, intentionally, is not mentioned to give us the message that is, it is difficult for those of self-righteous people, the hypocrites, who pretend something and doing different things to repent. The same we find it in the story of Jonah. The story of Jonah, he repented when he felt he did a mistake. He didn't go to Nineveh. But his idea of not going to the Nineveh remained in his mind. That is, he believed that is the mercy of God is only to his people, to the Jewish people, but not for the Gentiles. And this is what's his reason for not going there. And, and when the people repented, which any preacher, any priest, or any servant, or any prophet, his aim to lead people for repentance. And when people repent, they will be very happy for that. But we see in this case, Jonah didn't, she was very sad and even asked for this for himself. And we see also in the, in the chapter four that is the Lord spoke to Jonah, give him the example of the tree, and he explained to him why he had mercy on these people because he cared for them, and again, we didn't find what was the response of Jonah. Whether he accepted this explanation from God, whether he returned it, whether, uh, uh, sorry, whether he became happy with, with the saving of the, of the, the Nevites, we don't know. And of course, intentionally, the Holy Spirit lifted in this way to give the same message. So we, we have today about Judas as an example of hypocrisy and betrayal. That is the church focus on him. Not on him as a person, but in what he represents. And some ask why we have all these things in the, in the light of the Holy Week, starting even from yesterday evening till no, no uh, greeting by kissing in liturgy, in liturgy. And then we have this long hymn, Apichinun, and then which will repeat it again uh, tomorrow in the first hour of Holy Thursday. We have a special position in the opposite way of Judas to rebuke and to feel our refusal of what he did. So this is. And, and we, we may mention again, when we speak about the, the right thief and the sixth hour on Good Friday, we make a comparison between him and the right thief. And it, the church focus on this because of what Judas represented, that he represents the betrayal and he represents the hypocrisy. This is the two things. Judas, was one of the twelve. The Lord had chose him, and even he entrusted him by taking care of the books, the money books. Of course, he, among the others, disciple, he saw many miracles of the Lord. He listened to many teachings of the Lord. But he became the disciple of Satan. He moved to be from the disciple of Christ to be disciple of Satan. Satan controlled him. And that's why it, it is mentioned in the Bible, Satan entered him twice. Uh, in the Gospel according to St. Luke, it is mentioned that Satan entered Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and comforted with the chief priest and captain uh, how he might betray him to them. And in the Gospel of St. John, uh, and it's mentioned, now after the peace of 
uh, after he took the piece of the bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, uh, what you do, do it quickly. And St. Augustine, he has an explanation of why Satan entered him twice now. He said that is Satan first entered Judas when he planned in his heart to betray his Lord. And in this spirit he came to the Last Supper. But after he reached for the bread, the devil no longer tempted Judas as a disciple of Christ, but took a position of Judas. Like when you firstly, an idea came in your mind, the Satan put in our mind many of, of bad ideas, and this is the first thing. We are tempted. But if we accept this idea, and then we move to the second phase, to, to turn it into action. So, and this is to confirm that as he already became a disciple of, of, the, of Satan. Disciple means followers, learning from someone. If you are a disciple of someone, you follow this, this person. So he did not follow Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, but he followed Satan. Judas is not only a historical person, it is a person which we may face in our life, which we may find in different ways. So Judas is becoming an, an example. So I want to just to reflect how the Lord dealt with Judas to teach us when we find a Judas in our life, how to deal with Judas in our life. If you feel some person who betrayed you, learn, let us learn from the Lord Jesus Christ how he dealt with Judas. Number one, he goes by his full knowledge. The Lord knew that Judas will betray him. It's not something that he discovered later on. Nevertheless, he chose him as one of his 12 apostles. And he sent him also in the mission, which when he sent his disciples. So he trusted him. He offered him a trust and confidence. And Judas listened, as I said, to the Lord teaching, and he saw many miracles. And the Lord gave him a specific mission, is to be responsible to the money box, as I mentioned. In addition to that, the Lord did not punish him. Of course, he knew that he was stealing from the box. And we can ask why, at least to take the money box from him, not to continue to steal. But he left him. He left him to continue. And, and he, and also he washed his feet because he was attending washing the feet. And he attended also the, the uh, when the, the Lord uh, makes the, uh, the Passover. I will not go to the debate about whether he took communion or not, I just leave him. <laughs> because there are some saints they said that is, he took communion, some they said not. So it's not the point here. Uh, but, the, but I want to add how the Lord warned him several times. And the plot of Judas depend on something secret that is nobody know, and he make, made this deal. And of course, to sec the success of his plan, that is the Lord not to know. Because if he knows that is, then he will avoid going to the place. Uh, but the Lord showed him very clearly that he knows very well, hoping that he may change his mind. Like a thief, when a thief tries to enter a house and he finds that is the inhabitant of the house are there, he may escape. But uh, so the Lord told. And several times that is he shows that is he he knew. So for example, I give you as an example of the gospel of Saint John. As after washing of the feet of his disciple, he said, You are clean, but not all of you.
for he knew who would betray him. And then the Lord said, most assuredly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And he gave more specific. It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot. And then he told him, uh, what you do, do quickly. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, Matthew, now as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And then the disciples were surprised, and they started to ask, each of one of the disciples asked, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He who dipped his uh, hand and with me in the dish will betray me. And he said, It would have been good for that man if he had not been uh, born. And when Judas asked a direct question to the Lord, he asked him, Rabbi, is it I? The Lord said to him, you have said it. And I think there is no clear way than, than that. And when Judas came with the, with the soldier to seize the Lord, uh, and he gave him the sign to kiss him. And the Lord told him, friend, and he's still calling him friend, why you have come? So Judas and then the Lord told him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? That's why uh, yani, yani all this is an example which we read from the Bible to see very clearly how the Lord was very generous with, with Judas. Because what Judas did, a great sin, and if the Lord did not offer him a good thing, like choosing him, putting him in a special uh, uh, mission, or he, if he did not listen to his words or to see his miracles, and if he punished him because he stole from the money box, may he will find an excuse. Excuse of not knowing, excuse because of the revenge, because I was punished. Uh, everyone who is punished feels I am I'm, I'm innocent, innocent. So for Judas, it became as is no excuse. And that is the way when we put people who are betraying us in the position, they will not find any excuse for what they are doing, because the sin of betrayal. Is, is a very, you know, very great and, and sin, which you know, again is any honesty and any integ integrity of, of the person. And what is the fate of Judas you know, at the end? He lost everything. He lost the Lord, being a disciple of the Lord, this honor to be among the 12. He lost the, the money, because the 30 pieces, he gave it back. He lost his life because he went and committed suicide. And above all, he lost his eternity. Yes, he, he repented. But his repentance was not complete. Because he, he took the first step that he felt what he did was wrong. And he, and he moved another step by going and giving back to the, ma the money back. And what he missed is, is the hope for acceptance. He didn't have any hope that the Lord would accept him because he had no relationship with the Lord. If we compare him with St. Peter, who did something also very bad, denying three times knowing him. But why St. Peter, he, he also repented, he wept bitterly. But he, there was like 
there is there a balance of love between him and God, even if, if denying him against his love to Christ. But still, there was a relationship of love between uh, St. Peter and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And this sustained him when he fall. In the contrary, Judas ha ha had no such kind of love. And he didn't feel the love of God to him. His focus was in different things. The same also for us in our repentance. It's important for our repentance is we realize that this God's love for us never change. Whatever we do, we, the change is from our side, not from the Lord. The Lord, he loves us not because we are good people. He loves us because this is out of his goodness, because God is love. But he loves to, he loves us to see us in a good way because this is that he wants, that is his, his desire. So when we do something wrong, whatever this wrong, we should not doubt God's love to us, but in the opposite. We come to him because we feel his love and we, we, we trust that he will accept us. And this is, if we go back to the prodigal son, he did a lot of bad things. But the things which led him to, to go back to his father and not to wait to correct himself or to, to, correct, or to collect some money, to pay some money back, that is, he trusted the love of his father. And he trusted that his father will accept him even as a servant. But he will not reject him. So, and of course, the, the father accepted him as a son again. Uh, uh, so, let us learn from this, the, the today events, the contrast between the two, Judas and the woman, which was a Mary or the other woman, and to be uh, aware about the dangers of hypocrisy and betrayal and to know how to deal with people who may betray us uh, uh, as the Lord, he dealt with uh, Judas, and not to be like Judas, who repented halfway. He did not continue in his repentance, and at the end he lost. And, uh, and uh, let us always to trust the love of God, whatever the situation which we, we may be in, and at the end, the Lord will, will accept us if we come with him with a real repentance. May the Lord bless all of us with the blessing of these days and guide us during this holy week until we all with us uh, uh, rejoice by the holy resurrection and the power of the holy resurrection to be with all of us and glory to God now and forever.